Hey guys, I want to bring you another update with TikTok the ball python that we rescued. And based off a lot of the comments that we got, a lot of people don't know the difference between a ball python and a Burmese python, and also the differences of these two species being here in Florida. Okay, so this is a ball python. They are native to Africa, and uh, this is an adult-sized ball python. They can get bigger than this, but you generally don't see ball pythons over five or six feet. This is a skin of a Burmese python that was removed from the Everglades, and we have the skin as an education tool here. And uh, this snake was, I think this one was, I think about 13 or 14 feet long is this skin. I mean, obviously we have it wrapped up right now because, well, it's huge. But you can take a look at the difference right there of the two. I mean, just the size difference alone, but also the pattern difference. And so you can really see that very clearly on here. Now, again, ball pythons native to Africa do not get very big. Burmese pythons are native to Southeast Asia. And uh, the record size for a Burmese python in Florida was just caught a couple months ago by a friend of mine at 18 foot nine. And so very, very big difference in size right there. So because an animal is found out here, it doesn't mean it's necessarily invasive. So invasive species are things that are breeding. They have a self-sustaining reproducing population that is expanding. That's generally what we mean when we say invasive, but there are lots of non-native animals that are found out here, exotic non-natives like ball pythons. And I have caught other wild ball pythons here in Florida, but we don't know there to be a breeding population of these snakes out here. So they're not classified as invasive right now. Meanwhile, Burmese pythons 100% are. Now, if you're still sitting here like, yeah, well, I mean, if it's out there, it means it's invasive. Well, not really. If it's not breeding and it's not known to be expanding, it's, it's not going to be classified as invasive per se, but actually as a non-native or an exotic species, just as an individual out there. And to give you an example of others like this, there's a kangaroo out here that has been documented multiple times in Florida on the loose for years and nobody's been able to catch it yet. Now, kangaroos are not invasive in Florida, but there is one out there and it is wild. Uh, same with macaws. I have seen multiple species of macaws wild flying around in Miami. Now, there has been some slight documented breeding with macaws actually in Florida, but they're also heavily collected by people because of the price they can sell them at. So that's maybe a little bit debatable, but there are many different kinds of bird species that are found. I mean, basically anything you can find in a pet store at some point, you're probably gonna find it in Florida too. There are wild toucans in Florida. Wild toucan? There's at least three individuals that I've heard about that have escaped and are just flying around. That, that Gabby's heard about. Gabby's obsessed with toucans. I There's, want one so badly. She's doing research and trying to go find it. <laughs> All right, my I dream, heard about it. My dream is to rescue a toucan. That is like my dream. I don't get up. I'm down, don't get me wrong. If there's a toucan lands in our backyard, we're gonna to try to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also multiple capuchin monkeys that I know of that yeah. have escaped from people that are you know running around as well. Well, so. there are actually invasive monkey populations in Florida. We did a video about this before. We went and saw the invasive rhesus monkeys that are wild in Florida, reproducing and have been for many years. But then there are also escaped individuals that are not yet invasive. So it's a fine line right there between an animal that's just a non-native exotic that's here and then something that then becomes an invasive species. And that's why it's so important never to release non-native animals in an area like if you have a pet don't be like i don't really want it anymore i'm gonna let it go if it's by itself it's not going to cause a problem well that's right if it's true it's probably not going to cause a problem by itself but then if you have 10 other people that are like yeah it's not gonna be a problem for me either and they let it go and they let it go and then they find each other and then we get this situation over here and so that's why you never ever want to let go exotic animals up oh, cinders checking that thing out <laughs> That's good instincts right there, right? Let's show them the uh, tick damage on the Burmese Okay, python. so yeah, so this Burmese python came wild out of the Everglades and this is tick damage right here. So these guys do get ticks out here as well. And you can compare that to TikTok over here with her tick damage right there. So it will it, it will heal up over time. Uh just, oh, just takes a, time. There's a tick. There's a oh, tick God. that's preserved. Preserved in the, oh, it's so gross. Preserved wow. in the skin. That is disgusting. And nice and gnarly. Goodness gracious. But yeah, so we do just really like to cover that, that these are completely different species. They act differently. They have 
very different sizes as they grow, and they have very different possible ecological impacts on the environment. So again, ball pythons, not known to be breeding, not known to be invasive. Burmese pythons, 100,000% are. And we got so many comments from people like, what, that's an invasive python, why did you guys save it? Well, because this is not the invasive species out here. This one is somebody's pet, and it was let go. It, well, it was dumped, let's be honest. It was dumped at that park and uh, it doesn't want to be there. This is one that, I mean, look, you can tell this snake grew up in captivity, okay? Mm -hmm. you, I have caught literally hundreds of Burmese pythons. You would never do this with one of the pythons I caught out of the wild. It will 100% bite you in the face, okay? So this is somebody's pet that they dumped out here, unfortunately, and uh, it's a very different case than the Burmese pythons. Now that we've covered some of these differences, we're gonna go ahead and feed little Miss TikTok right here. Now this will be her second feeding before we gave her a really small mouse because we were not sure whether or not she was gonna eat, but now that we know she has a good feeding response, we're gonna go ahead and give her a small rat this time. All right, so we have her back in her enclosure and now that we have gotten past using um, these skin ointments on her, she has her water dish in here. We are keeping a water dish out just, oh, there she was a drink right now. Look at that, oh, yeah. that's so cute. You go. But yeah, when she had the skin ointment on, uh, we didn't want to have a water dish in there so she doesn't wash it off and then drink the ointment. But we're gonna go ahead and feed her. So we've got a little frozen frog rodent right here. This is a small rat. So just a little uh, trigger warning for some people who may not want to see this, we're gonna go ahead and feed her now. Rat's already dead, so it's not like it's gruesome, but you know, some people don't like that. All right, so we're really happy she's eating well, and that's her second meal, no problem, getting that thing right down. So we're pretty excited about that. So if you guys have any other questions or anything like that, anything you wanna know, let us know in the comments, and make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and check out our other videos.